Um, I do want to go into a couple of the things that are down here. This software actually has three different sides to it and they're kind of hidden. The first side is on the, top, uh, on the left. This is my archive. Anytime I take a video, snap a picture, create a file, those are going to go into my filing cabinet archive and you're going to see a list of them here. Not only that, but it will allow me to go further back into the archive where I have documents, images, and videos uh, arranged on my computer that I can get back to at a moment's notice. So again, if I use any of this stuff to create media, then I am going to tap the extreme left and get that archive to kind of pop out. On the right side, you're going to notice that I have a little deer. That deer opens up a little pinwheel. That deer opens up a little pinwheel and what that allows me to, to do is annotate over the top of what I'm looking at here. Now, Scott, I'm on a smart board. Why would I want annotation tools if I could already just pick up a pen and write over them? Well, keep in mind, a lot of people don't have smart boards when they get a document camera like this. So if you just hook this up to a projector or a TV at home, you'll want a way to get your pens working and that's how you would do it, through the software. So I can come up here, choose a color, and actually write over what I need to write on. I can erase if I need to erase. So I'm using the tools that came with the smart board to do that with. Again, that is just the little reindeer. Now along the very, very bottom, that's where a lot of the other magic lives. Along the very bottom, that's where a lot of the other magic lives. And I'm gonna go through these. Some of them are a little more useful than I, than others. You might come up with different uses for them, but I am going to rate each one of these for you because I'm a teacher and that's just what I do. So the first one all the way at the side says side by side. Scott, why would I want to use side by side? Well, what if I want to take a picture of some instructions, let's say, well, I don't have instructions, but here's the, the bell schedule for Liberty High School. And I want to have those instructions kind of over here off to the side while I'm actually doing a math problem on this side. I just now have those side by side. Maybe it's a science class and I have what I want you to observe and then the actual experiment running on this side. So is this useful? I don't know. Check, take a little look at the score. I'll edit in a score for you. Next, I've got multi-view. If I had a need to put rows and columns in here, I could use that. I'm going to give that a score of zero. Next, I have slingshot. As soon as I did that, what happened? Everything just got really, really small. Now, is that useful? No, not at all. Why would I want something to go smaller? What it did was it allows me to quickly, basically, take a picture in a moment's notice. So here's the little uh, thumbnail. Ready? I'm going to take a picture of my hand. All I do is drag it out. I just took a picture of my hand. Now I'm going to take a picture of just my mask. I drag it out. If I flip this up, I'm going to take a picture of the classroom. I just drag it out. Every time I drag as fast as I want to, I can just slingshot those things, those pictures, out and into a folder, into a OneDrive, into wherever I want to. So how is this useful? I got to tell you, when I was in a classroom, I would literally take the kid's work and slingshot it as I'm just flipping through it. That means that I had a digital copy of everything the kids ever wrote, all their homeworks, everything they turned in. I had digital copies of all of this. It was like having a high seed scanner for my classroom. When I had kids in the class and they had their little art projects, I flipped the camera up. They came up to my desk, held up their art. I just put it all in a folder. I now have an archive, a picture archive of everything that they did. So is Slingshot useful? I think it kind of is. So I'm going to give that a, a higher rating. The next one is called Snapshot. Snapshot does what you think it does. It takes a picture. Where did the picture go? It went in my filing cabinet. 
So it's here somewhere. Oh yeah, I changed mine so that instead of taking a JPEG picture, what it does is it turns it into a PDF for me. So I actually just have a PDF of what I uh, put there. That's because I typically do documents instead of pictures. I can show you how to change that when we get to the end. Next up, I have a record button. If I press record, guess what it's gonna do? It's gonna bring up my recording options and I have the ability to do slow motion, uh, stop motion, camera record, screen recordings. I have PE teachers using this a lot so you can make little instructional videos for you. Again, that micro, uh, the camera can be flipped up so that you can be on TV and you can make recordings. Multi-scan, you would use this if you are trying to copy the pages of a book or copy something because you can either set it on regular intervals where like every two seconds it's going to take a page, uh, a picture that would allow me enough time to change pages or when it sees motion stop, that's when it takes the picture and then you flip the page and it takes the next picture as soon as things settle down. Is that useful? Mm. We'll see. Next up, I have pause. That does what you think it's gonna do. It pauses, therefore, nothing else is gonna show up here. I can unpause that. When you do view options, it says, do you wanna rotate, mirror, reveal? I'm going, kind of looking through these. Is there anything useful in there? Not really. Zoom, I can zoom in, I can zoom out. I could also do that over there. So same functionality. It just depends on if I'm up at the board and I want to zoom or if I'm over there at the document camera and want to zoom. Focus, what do I want to focus on? Again, I can do that here with the focus buttons or I can do it here at the whiteboard. Adjustments, brightness, contrast, saturation, focus, those are all here. Cropping, now I will say this is kind of useful. Sometimes we have a lot of extra space on what we are looking at here. So I'm gonna take my mask and I'm just going to crop that area. I can choose to capture this new picture without all the extras. I can put this on a clipboard, or I can use what's called OCR, that is optical character recognition. If this happened to be a text, it would actually let me pull that text out and type it somewhere else without having to actually take a picture of the text and put it somewhere else. Um, I like the cropping tool, but I'm not gonna use that today. I do have a whiteboard, I'm not gonna get into that, but over to the extreme right-hand side, I do have settings, and I do wanna talk about these for a second, especially under the scan uh, tab. You remember me saying that when I hit snapshot, it takes a PDF. That's because my output format that I chose was PDF, but if you wanted it to take a JPEG or a PNG file or a G, uh, GIF, 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 whatever you wanna call it, um, you're able to change so that when you hit snapshot, it takes the kind of picture that you want it to. I kind of like the PDF myself. Um, you can change the naming parameters of that. You can change where it records and how it records. Um, so all of that is here on the extreme right under settings. Now, Scott, that was a lot of information. How am I gonna ever figure out how to use this to the best of its abilities? You're not, you're not gonna ever use all of this. You're gonna find the pieces that work for the content that you need to deliver to your students. There might be one or two things that you break out throughout the year, but for the most part, if you're the kind of person that needs to have a book down here, then that's what you're gonna use it for most of the time. If you're the kind of person that has a science experiment and you've got certain things that you do with that science experiment, then that's what you're gonna use it for most of the time. But are you ever gonna use all of this? Probably not. I do want to want highlight once again that this is an app on my computer. And because it's an app on my computer, it can be moved around, it can be shared, I can take the, the things that are in this app and kind of move them off to the side and bring them up when I need them. In fact, I can just minimize that. So if I'm in the course of my lesson and I've got a, my website up here that I'm teaching for and I say, oh, now I want to switch to my document camera, I can just bring that up full screen and away I go. All right, so switching back and forth for the document camera does not need to be a, a big thing. This thing does fold all the way down and that is the hover cam.